A Chinese startup's entry into the AI race is sending shockwaves through the tech sector, market leaders such as NVIDIA leading a broad-based sell-off. The company's DeepSeek AI assistance is raising concerns about American competitiveness in the AI space. Joining us now to discuss is Evan Chen, VP Portfolio Research at TD Asset Management. What fascinating developments. So glad to have you here on this. Uh, but let's talk about what DeepSeek is. I, I saw a few headlines before today. It didn't seem like a big deal, and suddenly it's a big deal. Yeah, so they just released a new model last week. Um, this model is as performant as one of some of the top of the line Western models that exist uh, right now. But here's the kicker. It costs 90% less than those ones to train, or so they say. So they say. So here's the big thing, where is the rattling of the U.S. tech establishment. How does it actually compare to other platforms? Like ChatGPT has sort of been mm -hmm. uh, the, the name we've become accustomed to in this space. Well, on performance benchmarks, it's almost equivalent. Um, so that's a pretty expensive model, you know, $2.20 uh, per query or something. Um, the price for this, 15 cents. So you can see how someone would be scared if your top of the line model is equivalent to this model out of China that's much cheaper. So, you know, let's think of the Tour de France, 23 days. You know, I have the top of the line carbon fiber bike. I'm, I'm running, I'm going, I get first place, I'm happy. But then the guy next to me has some Facebook marketplace bike that he's uh, gone <laughs> second place. And I'm like, what's, what's going on? So that's sort of what's happening right now. So we do know last week, the Trump administration announcing this project called Stargate. They gave us a $500 billion number in terms of the infrastructure investment to get the Americans dominant in the space. So if we're talking now about DeepSeek saying, claiming that they developed this for less than $6 million, where's the disconnect here? Yeah, I think it's important to be skeptical of everything that DeepSeek's saying. So that $6 million, five and a half million, um, only includes the training run for the final model. It doesn't include, you know, all the back end work that they had to do. It doesn't include all the salaries of 100 plus people on the paper. It doesn't include the work of the models that they fine tuned and, and put together. So I think that five and a half is, is vastly under reporting, um, you know, what they actually used. And then they also said they used H800s, which are the previous gen model of NVIDIA chips. Why NVIDIA is off so much today is people are afraid that maybe you don't need the top of the line chip in order to um, create these AI models. Well, you know, there's export restrictions on in the US, and I don't think that China wants to show their entire hand. You know, if they were using top of the line chips, they don't want the US to know that. Um, it would just lead to a shutting down of some of these ports of entries of, of the, these top of the line chips. Well, it's obviously always hard to know uh, how the market is going to be moving forward, but we do know the reaction in the here and now to this uh, entry into the AI race. Uh, it's uh, sending a lot of shockwaves through the market. It's through the tech space. We saw NVIDIA down. We're seeing power generation stocks down, uranium. From a market perspective, from an investor perspective, how should we be thinking about this deep seek technology? Yeah, I think you covered a lot of it. I'm going to bucket these stocks into three buckets, let's say. Let's call it enterprise uh, spending. So let's think of like software, hyperscalers, cloud providers. Second one's power generation, GE, Renova, um, some of these uh, power line companies, cooling racks. And the third is, um, you know, utilities and, and um, sorry, semiconductor mm -hmm. stocks. So NVIDIA itself, Broadcom, some of these names that you said. So I think those, uh, the last two, semiconductors and power, there's a little bit of a question mark going on because while we know that uh, it, that five and a half million dollar number probably isn't right, there may be something going on behind the scenes. So I think there's a little bit of a question mark there. On enterprise, I think this is an opportunity in some of those stocks, and I think uh, the move is overdone. And the reason for that is if we have a cheaper model, that's just cheaper intelligence, cheaper AI, um, and generally what happens with these input technologies, so think of like fuel, internet, um, memory, as the input becomes cheaper, more of it is used. Um, I talk to a lot of companies, and they say one of the biggest barriers to entry for AI is the cost. So if you can bring the cost down, I think there's going to be more use cases in software, in, in the cloud, um, and these companies are, are poised to take advantage of that. I find that so interesting because, of course, everyone sees the headline about this new entrant. They see what's happening to NVIDIA and other stocks. But when you talked about opportunity there, it suddenly it just it suddenly clicks. You say, yeah, this makes sense. If the technology isn't going to be as prohibitive for some, then there will be some sectors, perhaps longer term, that could benefit from this. For sure. You know, if we go from hundreds of billion dollars, 
hundreds of billions of dollars to train some of this stuff to tens of billions of dollars. That just opens up the, the opportunity set. But you're still going to need the compute to do it. So I think the hyperscalers who own, own the data centers, and they may change what they put inside, but that infrastructure and the power infrastructure there is going to be uh, valuable going forward. And we could be accelerating the pace of some of these use cases and killer apps to come. Uh, lastly, what this really sort of brings into focus for me, even apart from the individual players here, is that if you're looking at the tech space and you're an investor in the tech space, how quickly a new entrance can come and start shaking things up. Oh, for sure. I'm, I mean, I've only been covering for a couple of years, but um, you know, I'm never shocked by some of these things that go on and um, some of the technologies that happen. It, it's all very exciting.